doubles. How's it going? Come on, let's let's just start it off. Let's be right up front. Let's be honest. That outcome in Montreal, if you're back in your playing day, you're watching this tornado roll in, and then it finishes like that. Castillo hits the field goal. How deflated are you? What is your mindset? Are you saying, you know what, maybe just uh, just sit me out of this one? <laughs> when you see things like that, you you – you finally believe in the football gods. You know, that's that's one of the times where the football gods showed up for sure. And they were definitely on Winnipeg's side, man. I mean, uh, you know, if that's not the luckiest play or weather, circ- weather circumstance in football that I've ever seen, it's that. So uh, they have to be thinking they're lucky stars. How hard would it have been to get revved up if you're a rider for that game, seeing what happens an hour before? Yeah, I, I mean, it's tough. It, even if they would have lost and, uh, you know, you secured the, the first place, you still would have – it would have been tough getting up for that game as well. So, uh, but after seeing that, just feeling like the game was over and, and, you know, almost being able to touch that home field advantage, uh, it, it had to be deflating. Uh, I mean, Coach Mace did a great job of keeping his cool on TV with the cameras on him, but I'm sure inside <laughs> he was just burning hot. So, uh, you know, kudos to him for, for keeping his emotions in check. Speaking of emotions, though, talk about a roller coaster of emotions, right? Because when Castillo misses, you think if, you know, you'd be thinking, Terry, and like, all right, let's strap it on. Here we go. And then all of a sudden, oh, no, there's still some more time. Oh, this happened, that happened. All right, good luck, guys, because uh, now I'm back yeah. out of this one again. Like, it was up and down, right? Well, I mean, you know, you learn quick when you come to the Canadian Football League that, you know, so many possession changes could happen in, within the last two minutes. Uh, if your defense buckles down and gets you a two and out, you know, anything can happen. And, and, and the punt return before that, Lucky Whitehead, you know, he returned it about 50, 60 yards. So, um, you know, if you're Winnipeg, you always believe that if you can get a stop, you have guys in positions that can make plays. And, uh, you know, this time it was just the weather who made the play for Winnipeg. Oh. Uh, <laughs> do, what, do, do you take do, do you take anything? We just talked to Coach Mace, and you know what? There's, there's not a lot of good tape to watch there. But do you take anything uh, good from that game? Maybe is it young Jack Cohn getting in or a, a chance to get in and sling it a bit? Or what do you take from that game, Darren? Yeah, I think that's the main thing. You want to get some guys, some experience, guys who, uh, you know, the preseason tempo is a lot different than a regular season tempo. And to to get some guys, some experience uh, against a team like Calgary, who's playing full speed, who has their starters in. And uh, he he definitely got some good, valuable experience, something that you can't teach. So um, it was good to see he made some plays. And uh, I'm just glad that everyone came out, especially the starters. I know Schaefer Baker played the majority of the game and the offensive line and a couple guys on defense. So it was just good to see guys come out healthy and, uh, you know, you can get ready for playoff football. So now looking ahead, uh, Darian, to the uh, BC Lions and the uh, West semifinal, uh, Coach Mace called it out there. He just said, you know what, let's pack the place. Uh, This is uh, something that, of course, the team was fighting for all year to have a home playoff game. We all know how strong Ryder Nation is. You know that better than anybody else. So maybe just your thoughts on on how great this can be uh, for the home team, of course, to have earned this home playoff game now and uh, have Ryder Nation uh, behind them. Yeah, it's, you know, when, when that place is packed, there's no better stadium in, 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 in Canada, for sure. And, uh, you know, Ryder fans have such an impact on games, false start penalties, uh, just making it tough on offenses. And, uh, you know, it, it, it can really, really, really be a, a huge home field advantage. So, you know, I'm with Coach Mace on that. I would love to see a packed out stadium. Just the enthusiasm needs to be back. Um, you know, this is a huge game against a tough BC team who's coming in. Uh, hot, I think, from Vernon Adams having a, a great game against Montreal and, uh, you know, just getting that, that, that chemistry that they built with the receivers earlier in the season, uh, they're going to come in with some confidence. So uh, the crowd can mm-hmm. play a huge factor. Do they – how do I put this? Does BC have more tape on the riders and what the riders can do from the last few months 
than the Riders have on VA, even though he beat us early in the season? Yeah, I would say so because VA VA hasn't played uh, you know a lot of meaningful fo- football towards the end of the season, so you're still kind of you know figuring out what offense fits him, what style of plays would fit him better. And, um, you know, the last time he played the Saskatchewan defense, he had a lot of success as well. So, um, you know, with Nathan Rourke being in there, uh, it's kind of hard to study BC. You have to go back to the beginning of the season and study uh, when Vernon Adams was in the game. So with Saskatchewan, you know what you're going to get. And, uh, you know, I'm sure BC and Ryan Phillips and and that coaching staff, um, you know, they know how to prepare. And, uh, you know, I think we're setting up for a very, very good uh, West semifinal game coming up this weekend. Would, would you change anything week leading in to the playoffs for yourself, Darian? Would there be an extra focus maybe on, on a few different things? Would you change anything? I think what you would look for now is just tendencies, right? I think when you look at 18 games of film on certain guys, now I'm looking at a corner or his depth or, you know, a linebacker's depth or, you know, where guys are because they're set into, you know, the positions they're going to be in and how they're going to play certain coverages at this point. So I will just be looking for different tips, things like that, that can make my reads easier. And uh, who knows? And, you know, you can pick up on one thing that you didn't notice during the regular season that could lead to a touchdown or a big play during the game that could just totally change the course of the game. So that those are some of the things I will be focused on right now if I'm Trevor and, and you know, the, the Ryder coaching staff. Of course, the last time the Riders and the uh, Lions met was at Mosaic, Mosaic Stadium, and the Riders won that one easily, 39-8. to eight. But do you almost look at that game, Darian, as a little bit of a one-off? Like, that's not the real BC Lions? I definitely would. I mean, especially offensively. You know, we all have talked about the struggles of Nathan Rourke, you know, this season. And mm. uh, that, that offense that, you, that we've seen with him is a completely different offense with Vernon Adams. Vernon Adams stretches the field. Uh, you can just tell with the speed that he has and Hatcher and McGinnis, he led the league in receiving. Uh, you know, he's just a different quarterback. He's a down-the-field guy. And, uh, you know, if you're a DB, you have to be on your P's and Q's this week because a lot of those 50-50 balls that, uh, you know, Nathan Rourke won't throw, Vernon Adams will throw them up to those big receivers. So, uh, you know, you're, you're one play away or, or one situation away from a big play when you're dealing with a quarterback like VA. And uh, there's something you have to think about in that defensive backfield. At what point, let's put ourselves, uh, you know, or you as put yourself in the shoes of the BC Lions, at what point – does weather become a factor? It's supposed to be plus four Saturday, but once that sun starts to go down, it's going to dip quick, quick, quick. It'll be closer yeah. probably to freezing at some point in the game. Does that make a difference, or at what point weather-wise does it start to make a difference uh, for players that aren't accustomed to it, doubles? I really don't think temperature matters. It's all about wind and, mm-hmm. you know, the speed of wind out there in Saskatchewan, man. It's, that's the, the most important thing. If it's a little chilly and there's no wind, you know, guys can easily adapt to that. But when it's windy and you come off the field and you you feel that breeze just just blow through your shoulder pads, that, that can affect you. So if it's no wind, I think, uh, you know, that's advantage BC because, you know, they like to air it out. Uh, you know, Stanback didn't have as good of a season as I'm sure he liked. But if there's no win, BC is a, uh, a 70% passing team, and uh, I think it's to their advantage. Let's spend some uh, last few minutes here on the NFL. Hail Mary yesterday, Washington, yeah. Chicago. Oh, if you're a Bears fan, you, you know, like, uh, unfortunate. There it is. If you're watching the stream, yeah. you see it. Um, take us through. Have you ever completed one of these? And, and what's the mindset for the quarterback? Um, when it comes Hail Mary time? Yeah, I actually did in high school. Uh, my, <laughs> nice. my senior year of high school, we're in the playoffs, actually. Wow. We're down five, yeah, we're down five, and uh, it's like three seconds left, and uh, I, I just tossed it up about 55 yards in the air, and one of our guys just came down with it. It's, it's just luck, man. But in this case, you know, you, Jaden Daniels just buying so much time 
um, you know, allowing the defense to get displaced, knowing that his guys are going to be in the right spots. And, and you can see the catch there. Uh, that's just a guy who's taught to just, you know, sit behind and, and you're, you're, you're the tip ball guy. You're just waiting on mm. a tip ball. This, this played out perfectly for the offense and uh, the commanders. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. Aaron Rodgers has, has made a name for himself of being a Hail Mary uh, thrower. Mm. But, uh, you know, the way Jaden Daniels executed this play was just amazing. Speaking of uh, A-Rod, what's the biggest dumpster fire in the NFL, Dallas or the New York Jets? Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) I know your brother played in Dallas, so maybe I don't know. Sorry. (laughs) No, no, I I would have to say Dallas. and 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 I would say Dallas because you could just see it coming with Jerry Jones in charge, right? I mean... You, you play hardball with C.D. Lamb and Dak, and then what do you do as soon as the season starts? You sign them. If you're going <laughs> to sign the guys and you know that, just sign them in the offseason so you don't have to deal with everything that comes with it. So I just don't like the way Dallas is handling their contract situations. You could have gotten a guy like Derrick Henry. You could have you know solidified the defense, got some linebackers in there. Um, and, and I, I mean, the main thing is just a running game for Dak. I think you saw early in his career when Ezekiel Elliott was in his prime, if he had a 100-yard rusher or if he didn't throw the ball over 20, 25 times, he has like a 75% uh, win record. So uh, for Jerry to just drop the ball in that case, you know, I think is worse because, I mean, w- w- Let's think about it. I don't. I didn't have too high of expectations for Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. You know, I always felt like the Bills, the Bills were the best team in that division. And um, you know, I, I of course I didn't expect the Jets to be this bad, but <laughs> I really didn't have high expectations. I know what it's like coming off an Achilles. It takes time to get your feet back under you. Uh, and you know, Aaron Rodgers was known for extending plays and making plays with his legs. And he's not able to. You can tell that he's not comfortable doing that right now. A part of that is age as well. So, yeah. but I think a year removed from your Achilles, you're stronger. You feel more confident. And I think you can still see some good fo- football out of Aaron Rodgers moving forward once he gets his feet under him. You know, a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, last one from you, Darian. A quick one here. So you talked about uh, dumpster fires. Uh, who's out there that's a disaster. Who is out there that you've really enjoyed and been surprised with how well they're doing thus far? Well, I have to start with the the commanders. I mean, you know, who would have thought that they'd be sitting where they are, um, you know, with Jaden Daniels, who was kind of a journeyman in college, Mm -hmm. and no one expected him to come to uh, the commanders, who was such a bad franchise and, uh, had some struggles under Ron Rivera and made a coaching change as well. So a first-year quarterback, first-year head coach to be, you know, on top of the division is amazing. And, uh, you know, I keep going back to the Minnesota Vikings, man. I, I just think that, you know, Sam Donald, he, he took his lumps in Carolina. He was with the bad New York Jets team. Good quarterback, but he just took his time. He learned. He went to San Francisco, learned from Shanahan, and he's bringing all that knowledge to Minnesota and uh, he just has those guys playing such great football right now. There are some Denver Bronco fans out there that are just like, come on, Darian, say Denver. Say no one expected Denver. (laughs) I mean, Russell Wilson didn't play that bad last year. You know, all the games were close. Um, You know, he had his, you know, if you look at his two years in Denver, he had his best year. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I'm not surprised by Denver. Sean Payton's a hell of a coach, and I think that yeah. uh, they'll yeah. always be steady. They'll always be in contention. But if you would have, who would have thought that Washington and Minnesota would be playing as well as they are right now? That's why I give those guys the nod. Last one. Do we put any stock in Baltimore losing to Cleveland, or is Baltimore still a wagon? Baltimore going to be there at the end? Yeah, Baltimore's still a good team, man. I think, uh, you know, they just ran into a tough Cleveland team. And uh, I was just talking to my brother yesterday. I mean, Jameis Winston was a number one overall pick. He's a national champion. He's a guy that can play football. And, uh, you know, I look at Sam Darnold and him, you know, kind of the same. When you go to a, a bad situation, you learn from those situations. And as you get older, you play better football. And uh, you can see that Browns offense just – uh, look just night and day better with uh, Jameis Winston over Deshaun Watson. It's crazy. 
But, uh, you know, I wouldn't put anything past Cleveland. They were a playoff team last year with Joe Flacco, so they're a good team. Yeah, that was crazy. Joe, Joe Flacco sitting on the bench for Indy right now being like, just put me in. I can win us this game. <laughs> and know, they didn't. Uh, Pittsburgh and, yeah. uh, and the Giants tonight. Uh, Steelers? Yeah, Steelers for sure. Russell Wilson looked good last week. I think he'll pick up right where he left off. And the Giants are just catching so much hell from uh, <laughs> not, not signing Saquon Barkley. I think it's just downhill mm-hmm. for the rest of the season for those guys. Wow. New York uh, football fans are in a tough one. New York sports writers and stuff, good year for them because they get to write about these two dumpster fires. But, uh, yeah, football fans. All right, Doubles, I know yeah, your kids are busy um, and you got things going on down there. I appreciate it. Go Riders, right? We want to talk on Go Monday. Go Riders. We want, to, uh, we want to tee up that Winnipeg game. Yeah, it should be a big one. Absolutely. Thanks, guys.